Dr. Mindy here, and on this video, such an important topic. We're gonna talk about what is the best fasting length for women. And if you don't have a cycle, sit tight, because I'm gonna explain this for the cycling women first, and then I'm gonna go to the women who don't have a cycle, so sit tight. So if you are new, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and as always, I love being on this journey with all of you. Okay, literally, this is my jam. This is like, I talk about this all day long. I'm applying it to women. Like there is no doubt this is how women should fast. So let's go through it. Here's the first thing I wanna show you before we even go into the days. If you are a cycling woman, this is really what your hormones look like in a 28, 30 day period. So when these hormones get high, when they hit their peak, this is when fasting is actually going to be the hardest. When they go into their lows, fasting is gonna feel so much better. So we want to mind these two peaks, the peak at ovulation and the peak the week before your period. But there's a little bit of nuance here, so I wanna walk you through that. Let's start with day one through day 10. So this is this period right here. Let's, I'm a visual learner, so let's look at this. Like when we look at this right here, your hormones, they're low once that your period starts, they're low and they're starting to ramp up. So from about day one to day 10, go ahead and fast. Three day fast, 48 hour dopamine hit reset fast, 24 hour fast. This time of your cycle, you are gonna find not only is your, your fasting effort so much easier, but you're gonna find that you're, you're lining up with what your hormones need and it's gonna have a groove to it that you may not notice in these other two times. So day one to day 10, this is when you are looking at fasting like a queen. However you wanna fast, go for it. Now, when we get to day 11 to day 15, this is ovulation time, and we all ovulate at a different period of time, a different day, but in general, the general rule is when these hormones are really going high, you wanna keep your fast around 15 hours. And let me tell you, there's a, there's a little bit of a nuance here. What can happen is the closer you get to 17 hours with fasting, you stimulate something called autophagy. Autophagy is where toxins get dumped out into your bloodstream. A lot of times in autophagy, we repair the cells, but a lot of times the cells will go, oh my gosh, there's too many chemicals in here. I'm going to dump heavy metals. I'm gonna dump, dump microplastics. I'm gonna dump phthalates, toxins in our environment. I'm gonna go ahead and get that out of the cell and it goes into your bloodstream and can give you detox symptoms. The second thing that can cause these stored chemicals to come out is an increase in hormones. So when the hormones go really high like this, what can happen is if you're stimulating autophagy and you've got hormones pumping through you, the two combined can be too much of a detox reaction and you may feel horrible. So if that's you and you're fasting really past 17 hours on day 11 to 15 and you're not feeling great, stop fasting 17 hours, keep it under 15. Day one through 10, you can go as long as you want, no problem. Day 11 through 15, you're gonna have to personalize this. You gotta decide if it's right for you or not. Day 15 to 19, we're back at a low point right here. It's back down low. So if you wanted to throw in a three day water fast there, that would probably work. Somewhere in this time period often is great for, for women to go into those longer fasts again. You know, if you're a woman trying to use fasting to lose weight, when you're down the weight loss and the, and the more pushing your fast to longer and, and trying to get yourself more uh, uh, unstick weight loss resistance, it can happen here and it can happen here where we lean into more keto, lean into more longer fast. So day 15, you're back looking very much at the same kind of fasting length as you did at the beginning of the cycle, day one through 10. Last one, this is super important. Day 20 until you actually start your cycle again, no fasting. 
If you are really fat adapted and you want to maybe go up to 13 hours, fine, but no more than 13 hours. So this is the time when your body's trying to make progesterone. And so as it's making progesterone, we don't want to stimulate cortisol in any way, shape or form. So cortisol gets stimulated from exercise. It gets stimulated from traffic, having a tough conversation with somebody. Um, there's a lot of ways that cortisol can get stimulated. But what we don't want is to use fasting as a tool to create more cortisol. That is not what we're looking for this week. These other parts of the cycle are not as vulnerable to that, but this part absolutely is. So this is a no fast zone. Those of you that are experienced fasters, you might be able to go up to 13 as long as your cycle is staying consistent and you're not losing any hair. Um, this is a fasting zone, day 15 to 19. Great fasting zone, day one through 10. We bring it down under 15, day 11 through 15. But there you go. Women, this is how you do it. Before I forget, women that are postmenopausal or don't have a cycle, stay tuned. I've got a whole nother video for you. I'm gonna show you what are some good variations that you could be applying. The other thing you could do as a postmenopausal woman is you could do the, what I call a 30-day reset.